Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I do coding for your enjoyment. The past couple days I had this idea for a fun new little web app to build. It's called X Days Since. You've seen those memes before where it's been X days since the last accident on site. Uh, the idea came for me because I've actually been detoxing off of coffee, which is a very strange decision to make, but I have been doing it. And it wasn't until this past uh, week that I actually had my first cup of coffee after, I think, three weeks. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a website to kind of either brag or shame myself on these types of things. A very simple website to kind of make your own X days since pages. Now, I've made these types of videos before where I kind of just show you a very glossy, uh, streamlined, showcase of how to build this app with these technologies. I did that with Vodi Uppy, but I didn't. I didn't do it with Vodi Uppy. I did it with another, I think I did it with uh, something else. And I figured that it's been done. I've done that. I've shown you the glossy way of making and using these technologies. And I thought it'd be kind of more fun to show you the raw and unfiltered way in which I write apps. The lightly edited version about how I actually go about coding, coming up with an idea and actually developing it. Uh, you're going to be my pair programming buddy along the way. And I'm just going to talk to you as if you were me because I just talk to myself when I'm alone in this room. So, uh, I'm not really sure what each theme of the videos are going to be because I'm winging this by and large, because that's going to be the point to just kind of give you the direct link into my head to uh, show you what it is to kind of make one of these apps. So I have a doc that we're going to start with this episode with. Okay, so here's the outline of the app. I kind of had an internal debate about whether I should do this live with you or just do it myself and then show you the results. I went with the results method mostly because this type of deep thinking doesn't film well. It would mostly be me kind of just sitting here being quiet and just thinking about what the field name should be. <laughs> last occurrence, last incident. And the reason why I know that is because I did. I spent probably five minutes vexing about what this field name to be. And I'm sure you've been there because naming things in programming is so hard. Uh, but I figured I'd spare you that and kind of come at you with some decisions and kind of how I, the framework I use to kind of come up with these decisions. Um, the, one of the first decisions I had was whether to buy a domain name. Uh, I actually had a uh, tweet about it. Do I buy a domain name for the silly app or just use a free subdomain? My favorite question was how complete is the app? And at that point in time, all I had was 56 lines of this file, which is probably a good indication that I shouldn't have bought the domain and I didn't. Uh, which I'm glad for. Uh, hi there, future Harry checking in. I did buy the domain name. I did. I couldn't get, I got too queasy about it. I ended up buying the domain name. And here you can see my notes. This is, this is how I make videos. I just kind of free form it in code. This is where I code. It's also where VS code has become where my mind thinks best. And that includes both writing code itself and also just like words. Um, this is where I actually think the best. But these are kind of like my talking points right here that I was gonna you know, talk about and I already did, you heard me say it. Uh, repo is live, I did that myself because you don't really need to be bothered by me making a repo. Um, I thought it was interesting like to you know, make a new repository and do that whole flow, but I did it myself. Um, I actually made an initial create, react, create next app. Uh, I'm gonna use Next.js for this project because I think it's the best React framework around right now. Um, so I already did all that. Um, where's my VS code? Back over here. The new icon is tripping me up, but you can see I'm in the repo. It's just a vanilla VS code. Um, and the data model for this app, I love it because it's so simple. It's only like, it's only two collections. I'm gonna use MongoDB. No surprise, that's my day job, MongoDB. This video is not sponsored. I'm not being paid for it. Also, I don't speak for my employer. All caveats aside, but It'd be kind of weird if I didn't use MongoDB as well. Um, using next auth, which will make its own users collection. And then each X days since, I'm calling an incident as like the most generic 
word for it. I actually vexed about this name a lot too. So actually, if you have a better name for incidents, I'm all ears. Uh, it doesn't matter that much. It's a pain to rename it later. So I'm going with this. Um, each ID is gonna be a, a unique string, which is gonna be the actual slug that you can have for your unique incident. Create a date, which is always just good metadata to have. The last occurrence of the incident, this is how you kind of get the uh, X in X days. You can kind of see I made this little template string for myself to think about how these things would be used, how they would be used. Last occurrence is the relative date. So if the date was, you know, April 1st and it's been a month, it would say it's been one month since title and title is since I had coffee. Could you imagine the punishment I put myself through for that? So silly. Creator ID is the person that made it, which is just gonna be a link to over here. And this is let just weird pseudocode that I wrote that I know how to read that lets me get my thoughts out of my head and onto paper. Because one of the hardest things is keeping things in track in mind. So the faster you can put it down on uh, a document, the easier it is for you to think about other things. That's one of the tips I've learned over these years. Um, also a thing that I've learned over these years is kind of thinking about the user stories, uh, thinking about how I as a user would use this app kind of gets me thinking through all the initial use cases that I want. This is, it seems silly to do, to like do this before coding, but uh, if you just jump into raw coding anything, what I've learned is that you inevitably get confused and lost and don't really know what to do. During my day job, um, there's this whole process that we do before we code, which is what I'm doing here. I call the entire process, it's my own word, I, it's not, I didn't invent it, but it's what I call it, is meta work. This whole document here, this whole thing is the meta work before I work on X days since. I would argue that sometimes meta work is more important than the work itself, because if I do a good job outlining my thinking and working about what I will work on, then when I actually code, my life should be easy and calm. It feels awkward, but this is all, when you're practicing to shoot a basketball and you're practicing just that form by yourself, that like, you know, make sure you follow through. I used to play basketball, so that's the metaphor I'm going with right now. Uh, they, you know, you gotta make sure that you follow through and it just feels weird to do that in the air, but what you practice in practice is what you actually do live during a game. So what I'm practicing here is what I'm actually going to do when we start coding together. Uh, and these are just, I'm not following any convention. This is just what makes sense to me as far as a user flow goes. That's again, like it's good to learn how to make user flows the official way and then do what's best for you. Like learn from the pros and then adapt it to what is best for you. So here I have the user goes to the home page. They can see a random incident title shown on the page, which depending upon how Next.js is performant, I may or may not do that. It's optional right now. And then you're prompted to register. So if a user registers, they go to their profile page, they can create a new incident, they can save the incident, and then they can go to their new incident page. And this is the uh, URL that I'm gonna have it be. I think very much in URLs, that's why they're in here. It helps ground me to see where things are. But this slug, it's going to be taken from up here, this ID. That was that linkage that I was talking about there before. And this seems boring, but it's so valuable to give you a framework on what you will actually code. Uh, you go to the profile page, you can see your list of incidents and you can click on each incident. You can go to the incident page that you created and then click on the edit button to edit the incident. You can also go to the incident page and there's gonna be a button that just says register a new incident where you actually had that cup of coffee, as I did. Ooh, it tastes good though. And then the timer goes back to zero. So pretty simple. Um, I'm cheating because I've already done the heavy lifting of figuring out my tech stack from my blog post before. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. The only thing that's really changed is that headless UI was released from Tailwind which more or less replaces Chakra UI for my use cases. 
because the big thing that I used Shocker UI for was like popovers and modals. And now with Headless UI, you kind of have that built in and better leveraged by Tailwind. And then after that, I just break down the work by commit. And I'm calling them tickets. That's what I call them at work. So I carry it over here, but it's mostly each one of these numbered items is essentially going to be a independent commit. And if I was trying to make a nice glossy video for you all, I would kind of make some narrative around them all. Like, you know, this is the dummy data video. This is the login one. And I don't care anymore. I'm just going to see how long the video is and then kind of cut it up and go from there. Mostly, I just wanted to make this app and I figured I'd take you along for the ride. So curious if you're going to be enjoying it or not, because honestly, when I make these types of videos, uh, they don't really get that many views. I'm always surprised what videos get views. Uh, so these ones do meh, they do okay, but I want this app to exist in this world and exist it must. Um, so the first page is just going to be making a scaffold just to get everything in place. Uh, we're going to add support for locking with next off, which has been very requested from people to have me show how that works. So I'm hopefully going to do that. Not in great tutorial detail, but kind of just, I use it in the past. So I'm going to go at my speed, how I use it now. Um, going to use MongoDB as a database to store things. Uh, going to add support for creating an incident. So actually I can create a new thing. So going to use React Query and Formic to make that easy for myself. Um, once you can create an incident, that means you can actually list the incidents that a user has created on their profile page. From there you can, you know, add that user story of being able to register a new incident, editing a new incident. Editing is always a pain, but so needed. Uh, and then the last, four tickets make me laugh because, uh, well, I guess the next three, so it's just like style it, <laughs> which is similar to just saying build the app. And there's no direction there uh, because I have no idea how this is going to look. I always dread these, the task of designing. I am bad at design, which is why I love Tailwind so much, frankly, because I don't have confidence in my design abilities. So those, Doing those tickets are going to be a big, big struggle. And then last but not least, to actually launch the app live. I mean, I'll be launching it along the way. So maybe I might move this up to set up that um, the uh, auto deploy so you can actually kind of see as I make the videos, but uh, make it live. And then I have ideas past this, like past the MVP, like uh, what was an idea that I had? Oh, being able to customize your incident page. like. MySpace style, set a background color, customize the font size and make it kind of your own, but that's not needed for the MVP. This is the core of it. This is a very bare bones version. That's just gonna be fun to make. Uh, that's kind of the idea of it. So with that being said, it might be nice to actually save this info because I think it actually has some good things I'm going to follow. I'm just going to put it in the, uh, let's actually make this capitalized so it's easier to read. Um, I'm just gonna put it in the readme because might as well just have this live here forever. I don't need this. Sure, I can put this here for now. Who cares? Uh, I'm gonna remove that because you don't need to all buy the domain before I do. Um, these are now not formatted to my liking because I wrote it in code. That's why I like using VS Code because I can just write things in code really easily. I want these to be indented just like that. This should also be pretty. User stories, let's actually spend some attention to Markdown to actually have some proper headlines. Um, should I make this a list? Yeah, why not? This is probably boring. I might just fast forward through this when I edit this because I don't think you really need to care about all this. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's good. And then this is also redundant. Uh, and then I can preview it. Mark that from preview. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. And then last but not least, I'm gonna say, check out the YouTube videos about this entire readme makes more sense. Just true. And I'm a big fan of using uh, the Git integration in VS Code because it's nice and easy to kind of see my changes here. Pretty simple. 
And let's do update, readme, save it, yes. And I really don't like pushing with ES code. I like pushing from the CLI, and that's what I do. So, cool. That means that this should be updated right like that. Dope. Okay, it's pretty late where I'm right now filming this, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, either that was one or two videos. I'm not really sure how I'm going to edit it yet. I might have to make another ending segment talking about a thing that you just saw because I don't really know how I'm going to edit it yet. The joys of making videos in different installments, but curious about your thoughts about this way of doing things. I'm actually just excited to have this app exist and I figured I'd take you along for the ride, baby. Baby. Could have done a live stream, but uh, it's harder to plan doing those. And at least now I can kind of edit it and make it a little bit easier to read on repeat than just a live stream where I get to cough because my voice goes dry from talking for so long. I think this is a little bit better. Not by much, just a little bit. If you're new around here and this is a first video you've seen of mine, it's a weird one. It's different, but you no, know, maybe I'll make more of them. Who knows? And if you liked it, subscribe. If you didn't like it, check out a different video. And if you like that video, then subscribe. If you didn't like both videos, I suggest you stop watching my videos because that's all I got to offer you. Thank you for watching though. Uh, it's been a good video, I think. Did you like it? I like making it. It's fun building things, right? I like teaching, but it's also fun to build. I think the secret to being a good teacher is building. Uh, I can't really teach you what I can, I can't really teach you how to build if I can't build it myself, you know? So that's me doing it here. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll catch you again in the next video. Until then, stay happy, stay coding.